Creek and the tombstones quake. Spooks come out for a swing and wake. Happy haunts materialize. And begin to vocalize. Grim grinning ghosts come out to socialize. W. W. Radio. Your information station. Hello, my friend, and welcome to the WW Radio Show, your Walt Disney World information station. I am your host, Lou Mangiello, and this is show number 601, and I'm here once again not only to help you have the best possible Disney vacation experience when you go to the parks, but I also want to bring you some of that Disney magic wherever you are with the podcast, live video broadcast on Facebook every Wednesday night, videos, blogs, special events, books, tours, and more, whether it's your first time visiting or you've been hundreds of times, if you're planning your next Disney vacation or love the history, details, secrets, and stories, there is something in the show for you because each week I'm going to take you from the parks to the screens and everything in between. If you're a new listener, welcome. Thank you for being here. Please go back and check out some or all the past episodes for interviews, top tens, reviews, and more. You can subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts and find everything else at the all new www.radio.com. So I invite you to please join me this week as we take a musical tour of Magic Kingdom in Walt Disney World. From the background music to attraction themes, we'll go land by land discussing our favorite songs, their backstories, composers, singers, and creators, as well as why they're so important and integral to the storytelling. We'll also share our own sense of nostalgia and memories, how the music helps to immerse us in the attractions and lands, and the emotional components as well. I'll also share some secrets, stories, and did you knows along the way in part one of our look at the music of Magic Kingdom. I'll then have the answer to our last Walt Disney World trivia question of the week, and I'll pose a new challenge for your chance to win an all new Disney prize package. Then stay tuned to the end of the show for more information, updates, your voicemails, and more. So sit back, relax. And enjoy this week's episode of the WW Radio Show. Sunday close because now is the time, now is the best time to talk about one of my favorite aspects of a visit to Walt Disney World. Surprisingly, it is not food, but it's the music because I believe it's not only a critical storytelling element, but really adds breath and depth to our experiences, whether it be a familiar theme song or environmental ambiance. And because it's so important, I think it needs its due, which is why we're going to look at the music of Walt Disney World, park by park and land by land, in the first of a multi-part series. And of course, we're going to start off right where it all began, in Magic Kingdom. And something of this importance and magnitude and fun cannot and should not be discussed by one man alone, which is why I enlisted the help of some longtime friends, music fans, Disney lovers, and members of the WW Radio Nation family. I still believe in ladies first. I want to welcome to the show Miss Terry Stinson Darty. Hello. <laughs> it's so excited to be here. <laughs> I, and we'll talk about this. You've you've wanted to you've been sort of pleading your case for this for a long, long time, both in person, email, you've sent me bribes in the mail, and clearly those are the ones that have paid off. 
<laughs> this is how I work. This is how I operate. <laughs> And a fellow briber just like you is a man who not only knows music, but he lives it, as he is the composer, arranger, performer, conductor, and singer-songwriter of the WW Radio theme song, among many other songs. He is Mr. Dave Rashoni. Evening, everybody. Thank you so much for uh, having me on. I'm looking very forward to uh, having this discussion with you guys tonight. And and like I said, you know, we've all talked about the music of Walt Disney World uh, together over the years um, in individual conversations, whether it be about the show or just while we're, you know, at the parks or something. Um, so this show really is a long time coming. And that's why I felt I had to sort of break it down into each individual park. Um, and, and the way I thought we would do it is, you know, think of it as sort of a, a musical tour of Magic Kingdom from background music to attraction themes. We're going to talk about our favorite sto- songs, maybe some backstories, if any, composers, singers. And I think we're also going to discuss why they're so important and integral. Uh, we can also share some of our own sense of nostalgia and memories and how these songs help to immerse us in the land and or attraction and i believe for many of them there's also an emotional component as well and i very quickly dismissed the idea of this being a top 10 because there's no way one to rank them um and of course it would be way way longer than a top 10 plus i also am going to probably have a few surprise questions for you along the way <laughs> because we don't um we, we don't talk about it and you know guys when we talk about the music of Walt Disney World or, or specifically Magic Kingdom I think for a lot of people their minds will instantly go to their favorite attraction and their favorite attraction theme songs and I think one of the reasons why I want to make sure we include the background music is because it's something that not everyone necessarily pays active attention to but i think it's so important for setting the stage right and that's really what magic kingdom is right it's a, it's a we are on stage there and this show that we are um, very much an active participant in takes place in all five senses 360 degrees and i really believe that the music for many people might be subliminal but is very important in in helping to very much set that stage before us, even before we walk into the gates. That is very true. Yeah, I um, <laughs> I, I view music at the parks much like I view music in a TV or a film, where you know, uh, especially not so much like you were saying, Lou, the attractions where they have their own and, and we'll go through them. Some of them amazingly have become uh, classic songs outside of theme parks. But um, the thing that I love about the music at Disney world is how it sets up um, each land that you're in. And even more so the transit, the seamless transition as you go from one land to another land. So, and then take that while you're in the lands and then you go into certain tra- attractions and it sets up the cue music sets up what that story is going to be so i i i agree with you it's just such a vital part of what makes disney world so special from from my history of loving music before i even went through the gates for the very first time that was going to be a defining factor almost more than smells and i know how important smells are but music for me i mean my kids have been brought up knowing and loving all of this area music and attraction music. And it, it just, it defines me. I mean, this is what I do during the day. I'm washing dishes. I'm listening to Disney area music. I'm yeah. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> right. You can always tell a Disney fan, a Disney file, because you can look at, I was going to call it an iPod, but you can look at their phone. You can look at their Spotify. You can look at whatever it is. And it's filled with the letters BGM. You know, there's so much yeah. background music that's so important to us. And, and we'll talk a lot. But, you know, Dave, to your point, I feel the same way about how critical. Look, when you watch a movie, there's a lot of times you don't necessarily 
pay attention to what's going on in the background. I don't mean the background visually, but the background in terms of audio. But imagine walking around Walt Disney World without background music. Imagine entering Main Street USA where it, it's very, very pronounced. And as that sort of curtain rises, you really start to, to pay attention to it. Imagine not hearing those songs. It's like watching a movie with no music. And if you've ever had occasion to do that, if you ever watched a movie with no music, it's very unsettling. It feels very, very strange. And you realize that something is missing. And if you like watch sometimes DVD commentaries or, or making of specials, you can see how music affects the emotional component of scenes. And I think it's a, it's as important as the scripts, effects, scenery, the actors are. I think the same is in Walt Disney World. Look, about think about riding, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean or, or, or Splash Mountain without that music. Um, you know, and and think about how much more you might hear, right? How much more, the, you know, the music sort of covers the, the you know, the, the, the dullness of people talking or babies crying. Um, even now, you know, visiting Walt Disney World while crowd levels are low, you know, speaking specifically now to, um, you know, going in this era of COVID-19, when the crowd levels are lower, it, it's interesting because I've said in the past that the visuals seem brighter, but the music seems... Yeah louder and it's more pronounced and I've, and I've definitely been more intentional in terms of wanting to pay attention to it and the other thing you mentioned too Dave was was the transitions um, how important as you pass and we'll talk about that too as you pass from land to land and you go through these portals that the Imagineers create um, they're not just visual but they're auditory as well Agreed. And, and and to bring up the point, you said, how weird would it be to go and there is no music? I remember one visit years ago when, when my kids were little, we had gotten to MGM Studios back in the day uh, so early that even before the gates, there was no music. And it was kind of like a real eerie, like, this doesn't seem right. And within 10 minutes, they had, but you're right, there's like, what's going on? You know, especially for a family like mine that is so musical, it was it was like, oh, I, this is weird. So, yeah. Yeah, same park. Um, just a few months ago, um, I, I have a cousin that is a cast member, um, and she she was uh, going through the park. They were getting ready to reopen and everything going through the park when they first just reopened it to them. And she said it was just the most eerie thing ever. What, but she had no people, no music. And she's just walking through Hollywood studios, just looking around. She said, it's, it's like one of those horror movies, you know, where the whole world is destroyed. And you're the only one left. You're just walking around going, what happened? So, yeah. Right. Something yeah. is yeah. missing. Something is clearly missing when you yeah. don't hear that music, even though especially for those of us who who have the the privilege of being able to go multiple times, maybe a year. You almost sort of forget about it. Right. You're, you're paying attention to what you're seeing. In my case, what you're tasting, not necessarily in what you're hearing. And that's why I want to definitely talk about some of the things that maybe you've heard hundreds of times, but never really paid close attention to um and, and it's gonna be very interesting to hear each of your perspectives because i think you know we, you talk about the top 10 smells right it, it, this right. this episode that i when i did it 12 years ago however long it was i was nervous about doing it. I'm like nobody's gonna get it nobody's gonna understand what i'm talking about but you know our olfactory senses are the ones that are most closely tied to memories but i think right behind that is music and i think Music has even more power because it is not only just tied to memories and nostalgia, but helps to create a sense of of place, right? It helps to immerse us in this place. I think it it ties it, it's sort of that that um, connective tissue that ties a lot of things together and it does evoke uh, incredible senses of emotion and varying types of feelings, whether they be inspiring or sad or happy, whatever they might be. Um, I think there's a little bit of therapy that that's that music provides us too. I think sometimes 
whether we're happy or sad or, or having different feelings, we turn to music to make us feel a certain way. Oh, and yeah. I think that's why we have this, so much music on our phones or our playlists because of the way it makes us feel or the thing that we want to be connected to or connected back to. Very true. Um, I, my emotions are so intricately uh, <laughs> involved with music that it usually is a song. I mean, I feel like even at a funeral, I always, if it's, if it's someone that I knew and loved, I volunteer to do the slideshow for them and to take on that extra work so that I can add that music and then just go ahead and feel those things. Anyway, that's, not in the magic kingdom, but it music does trigger every emotion in me. Terry, all I'm going to say is thankfully we're not doing Epcot because I could not deal with you and we go on. <laughs> oh, well, we go on and promise. <laughs> it'd, be two, it'd be two of us. We're, we're going to do uh, that way. Yeah. Uh, music is the only thing that can pull that emotion out of you. It, it it's it's why it's used right it's why it's used think of uh of think of in movie turns think of um and i know i'm a little off tangent here but think of the towards the end of Endgame, when the portals are opening mm -hmm. up and tell me that music doesn't play doesn't elevate that scene even more so watch and it's it not on, watch it without the music right i was going to say right and all of a sudden it it's not as impactful no, I mean it's a it's obviously a very impactful uh, scene uh, when everybody's coming back, but the and the score isn't very elaborate. Mm -hmm. But my God, is it so emotional? I yeah. mean, just love it. So just to agree with your point, Lou, that it's uh, music for me always will be emotional, it, it, you know, and bring out, uh, you know, all it, a, a picture can do it. Uh, a visual can do it, uh, but a, a, a good, well song score does it 10 million times better. Yeah. And and look, you know, I also part of wanting to do this, too, is, is highlight some there's we're going to obviously highlight some of the people behind the music, too, because I think, you know, those they also unless your last name ends with. Ermin or, or, or Baker, you, you may not necessarily be connected to some of the music in Magic Kingdom. And there's a lot of beautiful music there. And again, to your point, Dave, as a fellow Losty and fan of Lost, on, now the, on, on my fifth rewatch, the music of Michael Giacchino in that show truly makes and breaks certain episodes. And there are these incredibly moving and haunting melodies that if they were not there would make th not just those scenes and those episodes, but that show less, obviously, again, using the word impactful to make me watch it for a fifth time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, again, not to get totally off traffic, but you're right. Uh, Disney World has its own set of classic composers and and, and um, just like film scores, like, you know, we, um, I could go back to early days, but I, I mean, obviously, once John Williams got on the scene, it was all over. You know, <laughs> he he really brought scoring to the, the forefront. It, it became something that most people who who didn't understand the importance of film score, um, you know, it brought it to light. And, and you brought up Michael Giacchino. But um, as, as we're going to talk about the composers, that same principle, theme parks, same same thing so without a doubt and red so Wolf, michael, like i said i'm sorry go ahead no michael giacchino did the music for lost <laughs> all of a sudden all of a sudden terry is like well i guess i'm getting hulu um <laughs> it is. And it, yeah some of the themes have never just, seen one episode okay, uh, we'll, so. we'll have to fix that we're gonna we'll yeah, convert yeah. you before the <laughs> night is we'll, out we'll so. fix that that's for sure so again okay. we're gonna we're gonna go Land by land, uh, talking about some of our favorites, some of our stories. I think, you know, near the end, we'll start to also maybe plant in the back of your mind some of our, our personal favorites. And and then I'm going to throw in something else that you might not have considered oh, when we yay. think about <laughs> the music uh, as well. But look, even before we step through that very first portal, which for me uh, is, is one of the most 
important ones because when you walk under that train station and the curtain, you know, the lights go down and those curtain opens, and you step foot onto Main Street USA. There is a, a, a it's a transportive moment in in time and place going back to the turn of the century. But even before that, when you are standing outside the gates um, and you and you're looking at the train station and, you, and you've gone through the entrance turnstiles. It's really important here, again, using this idea and the parallel of this being a movie theater, you're sort of in the lobby, as it were. And if you listen to the music that's being played, it's it's a sampling of music from all the different lands. And much like you'd see as you walk through that the, 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 uh, the, the archway, where you see the attraction posters that are really like coming attraction posters, the music is an audio coming attraction that sets the stage and gets you excited. I'll put it in Lou terms. It's sort of like an appetizer before it's like a sampler course before you get in and start to really dig into the full menu. I'll, I'll give you one even more before that. In the hotels at the resort, on the bus or boat transportation, you're getting fed some of that in little tiny bites too, you know. But yeah, appetizer is a great word for it, Lou. And as you start to, you know, hear certain ones, right? Whether it's you know, "When You Wish Upon a Star" or it's Mickey Mouse or Davy Crockett or you know, something from you know, for Beautiful Beulah from Summer Magic, all of a sudden, like you might not be paying attention at something. The same way something catches your eye, something sort of catches your ear too. Yeah, they have everything at Main Gates. They have every tune that, like you said, could play throughout the parks. Um, apparently, they start each day with When You Wish Upon a Star. And then there's like a loop that goes almost a full two hours before it changes back up to When You Wish oh. Upon a Star again. <laughs> and it's all that same dreamy. You know what? The, um, that CD game. Ah, oh, what was it? Dis- Walt my Disney Walt Experience. Exp- the Explorer? Yes, Explorer. Walt Disney World yes. Explorer. They use a lot of that Main Gates music on the Explorer. I'm going way back now in the 90s, but yeah. And that's where I was like, oh, we know that song from the gate. <laughs> yeah, when you're coming yeah. in. Yeah. So, I mean, we know the song other than that, but that version. And it is I, almost a little bit, it's, it's, it's sort of like a best of, you know, it's sort of a best of the best and those songs that are going to be instantly familiar so it immediately grounds you and connects you to the place that you're you're about to go into. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. So let's let's go and start at the very beginning in Main Street USA, which look, I, I've said this in the past, honestly is one of, if not arguably, my favorites of the lands for many reasons, right? And you know, people say, well, how could it be your favorite land? There's there's nothing to do here. There's no attraction here. I think the land is the attraction. And I think the music is the attraction uh, on Main Street USA. And I love it because not only does it connect directly to Walt Disney, the man and his childhood and, and the, the era in which he grew up, but so much of the, the music ties back to films that I saw as a kid and were such wonderful period pieces. And just from a, from a, from a thematic perspective, you know, you start off your morning on main street USA, like the music is not only probably mirroring what you're already feeling, but helping to guide you because it's so upbeat. It's so fast paced. And I think that's what sort of happens. The, the music as you go through land by land, very much mirrors what you are about to experience or what you just experience. And look, maybe I'm an, I dig that ragtime music that's heard throughout main street. And, and more importantly, there are so many of the films that they were, that they come from or were inspired by that. I remember very, very fondly. And this is where we start getting into the word Sherman over and over and over again. And over um, and over again. Yeah, yeah but yeah. but for the two of you, so take me to Main Street and, and some of your thoughts about the background music, um, how it makes you feel, and what some of your favorites are. Um, 
Terry. Ladies uh, first. Our, yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we will start with the welcome medley. I love the welcome medley. I mean, yes. well, it, it includes walking right down the middle of Main Street, USA. Um, I actually don't remember hearing that first at Magic Kingdom. I remember hearing it first on Disney sing-along songs, Disneyland fun. <laughs> And yep. the kids, I, I, that's where my kids and I learned all the words to that song. And uh, that that will be a recurring theme as we go throughout because my kids and I believe that, you know, attractions and songs that you're hearing in the middle of Main Street are sing-alongs. I, I firmly believe that. I believe that, that on Navi River Journey. I believe it on Main Street <laughs> USA. <laughs> They are sing-alongs. So, um, like it or not, if you go to the parks with Terry, it's gonna be a sing-along. So, it, it, I just go, yeah. I, even when <laughs> I don't mean to, I just I find myself singing. So, anyway, that that's where I would start, and that's got the trolley song and the welcome song, and but walking right down the middle of Main Street, USA. Yeah. that's where it always starts. You go, Dave. That's, no, it's funny, Terry. <laughs> uh, we have our family has the same thing. The the VHS sing along, walking down the middle of Main Street, and I think we there is <laughs> they're probably going to kill me for this, but there may be even a home video of us recreating that um, on one tri- on one trip. But yeah, but uh, I think Lou was looking at my notes because on my notes I I, I said the ragtime feel. Ragtime music is just uplifting music and it, it it i've got you know just puts you in a good mood to start your day you turn the corner and hey look there's a castle and and that that feel good music all the way down main street as you're uh, and most guests obviously i'm i'm guilty of it, of it too you're kind of rushing down main street you know you take your your pictures as you're walking of, of the castle and all that kind of, I mean, we're all trying to get to the first attraction, but all that music's in the background. It's uplifting. Um, um, the music from Summer Magic, right? Uh, um, and then I remember hearing stuff from the Music Man, and um, uh, I think Hello Dolly's in there. I mean, just just music from I don't. I wouldn't, is it turn of the century or certainly after? You know, it's from a, an era of music that is you know just meant to be fun and and enjoyful and all that stuff and then i think it's it's purposely there to start getting you into that good mood and all that kind of stuff and then of course if the damper dans are there stop stick and listen you know <laughs> well and that's it for me so you know as as a, a musical theater kid and, and a theater major growing up um, and a fan of, of so many of the, the live action disney films those are the ones that sort of you know perk my ears up so you you mentioned hello dolly and you know even though that this was was composed later on it was it was sort of rearranged in that ragtime style to sort of match that music loop and i know for a lot of people they're like no 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 put on your sunday clothes isn't from hello dolly it's from wally well it is from wally but it's originally (laughs) from hello dolly um and look i i think um you know the 1963 film Summer Magic with Haley Mills and I God I just love Burl Ives in it so much. Um, uh, Summer Magic Flitterin is another Flittering, one yes, there. Yeah. Um, Sherman Brothers music uh, obviously go, you know goes without saying. Um, like you said, Music Man is is in there as well. And those two, those are those period pieces that take place yeah. at the turn of the century. So it really helps to establish a sense of time and place, you know, and then you, it's part of the way to connect the dots. And as you go down main street and you're moving forward in time, there are all these visual elements that ground you in a certain place and time, but the music really helps to solidify that and really bring that full circle in a way that I think is, is even sometimes more powerful than the, the visuals as well. Yeah, Let me give I, you a tiny bit of controversy considering the songs from Summer Magic. Um, I watched that movie because of listening to the audio guide, um, your audio guide. And so I watched this movie and my daughter, who is a complete feminist, <coughs> was so horrified by the song Femininity. <laughs> so, 
I got to tell you, I was dying laughing. I thought it was hilarious. And, and but, listen, it, again, you know, it, it's, it, it was created in a different in time and understandably, right. you know, I right. can understand yeah. why mm-hmm. um, some people might find that song <clears throat> interesting, to say the least. Uh, <laughs> but I enjoyed it. <laughs> but even, you know, notwithstanding the movie, the music from the film, some of my favorite songs um, that are performed on Main Street, which, yes, I, I have, you know, on my phone and previously on my on my um, iPhone or iPad, was, was some of that, um, some of the different ragtime songs like Junk, Mag, Junk Man Rag, The Desecration Rag, Triplets, The Old Timers Waltz. They're all performed by the Paragon Ragtime Orchestra. And again, sort wow. of giving credit to the artists. Um, there's also a Jimmy Guffrey there song. Uh, Deary by Guy Lombardo is still in the loop as well. Um, and, and there's just so many. And if you sort of search for some of these, even on places like Spotify, and you start to find it, um, I just think that they're they're wonderfully done. And you want to talk about music that, you know, if you're stuck at home and you can't get to the parks, some of these songs you might not know by name, but there's something, for lack of a better word, there's something comforting about hearing them that that brings you back to this place. I did not know the the composers on the rag stuff. Thank you very much. Are oh, we headed down? No, toward, no, I was no. just saying, are we headed down toward the? Are we going toward Casey's hot? Dog? I mean, look, I can. I mean, I can. You know, we can stay on Main Street. All we could do an entire show about you know the song that's uh, the, the music that's on Main Street. But go ahead. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Terry. All I was doing was heading toward the Maple Leaf Rag. Yep, we were yep. just going to the pianist yep, at the yep. end of the street. So yep. <laughs> that's all we were doing. Yeah, he's, he's, I'm not. I'm not leaving Main Street. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Now that yeah, he is. He's awesome. He is awesome. Um, and, and like you said, it's 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 just. You know, it's the end of the, it's the street, but man, it's the culmination of everything that's that's has brought us there. You know, the live music, the ragtime that's being played live, guests watching a masterful musician uh, with his hands flying all over. I mean, I don't know how you watch that and not get a smile on your face and, and, and that. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and again, not to... You know, I, I don't know everybody who are some of the ragtime piano p- players in front of Casey's, but I know Jim Omohandro has been there 20, 25 years and, and is one of the most gifted and nicest people yeah. in the yeah. world. Um, and he can, Dark he's hair. literally, he's, sorry? Dark hair? Brownish hair? Glasses? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, I'm just trying to. His hands just move play. like so fast, it's crazy. But, you know, and he, he doesn't just play you know, all the, the, the Scott Joplin songs. I mean, he has yeah, just such yeah. a, a wide um, scope and breadth. You can say, hey, can you play this song from maybe my kid's favorite Disney film? And maybe he'll even, you know, play it in a way that's appropriate for Main Street yeah. USA. Yeah, they do. They do a lot of their own. I remember talking with Jim and I've talked to some of the other piano players. Imagine that. Um, and, and they do. They don't have stock range. It's a lot of what they do, especially when it comes to the Disney songs, is they they know the melody, but they they're so gifted musically, they'll, they'll they come up with their own arrangements. So and and like you said, Lou, in the style of the ragtime, you mm-hmm. know, genre. Yeah, they're amazing. Are there any um, are there any specific favorites that you have from Main Street that you listen to or just bring a smile to your face when you hear them? I'm putting you on the well, spot. I told you I was going to put you on the spot more uh, than yeah. once. So I, I almost didn't want to say fort- fortuosity. See, I was so afraid. Yes, I thought I was going to say it wrong. <laughs> fortuosity, I love and. Um, that no, I'm just gonna stick with that one. What movie is that one from? It's it's not the happiest M- happiest millionaire. Maybe is that'll it, have oh, to that be a trivia sense. question for this week. Uh, yeah, I want to say happiest <laughs> millionaire, but I could be wrong. Uh, flittering is mine. Anytime I'm I'm walking down, I hear flittering. I have to kind of walk a little slower. And then of course, if the Dapper Dans are out, it's just a a complete stop. Yeah. Until until they're done. Yeah, again, I, I I have often and and still do spend a lot of time on Main Street. 
Um, I, I, I'm not rushing to an attraction because I, I do, I love the way Main Street USA makes me feel. And it's due in large part not to what I see or taste, but without a doubt, it's because of what I hear. Yeah. So it's a great way to start the day, isn't it? Yeah. Just, yeah. Um, so, all right, let's move. Are, are we done with Main Street? I'm good. All right. I'm good. Let, let's move because you have to go left. I, I you, you always go left. You always go to Adventureland next. Um, it's way too early to be riding Space Mountain. So I believe that, that the transition from Main Street USA and the hub to Adventureland is one of it's one of the ones that you need to sort of stop and pay attention to because as you walk past the crystal palace and you start to go to that thatched archway and you look over and see how the crystal palace changes from being light and delicate with the popcorn lights and the white and the lattice work and all of a sudden starts to become overgrown and you look down into Adventureland and you can't see very much other than the the water and the greens and there's this air of mystery and there's this beautiful seamless blending of that ragtime music from Main Street to these jungle type percussive rhythms uh, which is just one of my favorite transition points I think anywhere in in all of Walt Disney World uh, but before I, I sort of just jump and just start waxing poetic about my love of the music of Adventureland again we will uh, we'll go ladies first in terms of some of the the whether it be the attraction because now we're gonna start talking about attractions too attraction music and background music from this land all right I'll start with the attraction. First one on our left, you know I have to go with Swiss Capolka. <laughs> and I just literally watched, um, I, I got carried away after 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and it suggested uh, Swiss Family Robinson, so I, I went for it. And I don't remember having watched the whole thing before and I loved it, absolutely. And when she started playing it, I was like, I am enjoying this so much. I just wanted to go back. I love Swiss Capoca. And look, this is this might be the the we went as well take this moment to mention the name Buddy Baker. Um Buddy Baker, because Buddy yeah. Baker, Disney Legend, is is a name that yeah. is going to come up time and time and time again, much like uh, Richard and, and Robert Sherman uh, in, in terms of his musical contributions to the Disney parks. Yeah, Buddy Baker is a is a is a hero you know he really is a legend and um the treehouse is fine i won't even talk about the elephant in the room which is you know the big one um and lou you have to quit reading my google notes because i i said <laughs> the transition from main street to adventureland the drums uh is 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 so well done um but i want to give a little love out to tiki room the Tiki Room. And I think it's more nostalgia than anything else. Uh, just because of the the obviously really close ties to uh, Walt and that the Sherman brothers have such a, um, uh, you know, they, it's it's the, their songs, of course. Um, and, and just, I know it's, it's, it's old, I know it's classic, but there's something about being in that room where when you think of the decades of people that have been in that room and, and it, how it still entertains. Well, it entertains me at least. Um, but I just, uh, we, we always have to go to the Tiki Room and, um, you know, and, and the, the classic, uh, um, let's all sing like the birdies. Or, um, oh, my God. What's the name of the song? Uh, um, sing it, Dave. Um, You're the singer in the room. All, so. Yeah. yeah. That's let's all, all sing like the birdies sing? sing. Yeah, let's all sing like the birdies sing. And, of course, uh, in the tiki, 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 tiki room. Okay. Um, those are those are just two classic songs. And always, I mean, you go in there and just like Main Street, you walk out of there, you are in a good mood and and you're going to be singing them. They're going to be in your, your head for a while. So until you go to small world. <laughs> so 
so so we're gonna pretend like that little period in the 90s didn't happen right yeah no <laughs> okay. not at all i i have no not at all uh, no, i don't word iago I, I will don't, not escape from my no okay. no i i believe a fire was this just reward so <laughs> <laughs> i cannot believe that that was that that happened but yeah well, you know, I love what's, the funny, tiki room. what's really interesting is that you say adventureland Right. And where do people's minds normally go? It, it's, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean. Right. You right. Know, you start yeah. to think that, you know, Yoho Pirates Life for me, which obviously we'll get to. I, I love the fact that, you know, Swiss Apolka is not necessarily the first one that comes to mind for a lot of people. But Terry, like for me, it's it's first the background music, which we'll t- touch on, but it very much is Swiss Apolka. Um, I, I love it. You talk about a sort of an earworm that gets stuck. And if you've never heard it before, if you've never walked through the Tiki Room, uh, the, the Tiki Room, if you've never walked through the, the Treehouse, you absolutely should. Uh, and, and but look, Buddy Baker is was such a an incredibly prolific um, uh, writer, not just for the Disney parks um, and we'll get to places like Tomorrowland and we'll eventually get to Epcot, etc. But, you know, he, we talked about summer magic and, and Toby Tyler and Merlin Jones. Um, Apple dumpling gang was one of, uh, yeah. was a favorite as a kid, many adventures of Winnie the Pooh from the seventies and then the Fox and the Hound in the eighties as well. Um, but, you know, for me, when I think of Adventureland, and I think this comes from my doing the audio tours, which is not meant to sound like a plug, but I guess it really is a plug. Because I, I when I think of Adventureland, I don't necessarily go right to attractions. I really do go to the background music. And I have such a, a fondness, again, for the background music here and... If I mentioned any of the names of the songs, you would have no idea what I'm talking about. And certainly, if I named the the any of the the groups like Gwem and Zaka and the Balafon Marimba, Marimba Ensemble, Ensemble. You, <laughs> right? You would. The average person is not going to know it, but if you hear some of these beautiful songs with these, have such a um, such a, a wonderfully I don't know how to sort of say it, these complicated percussive rhythms and flows. And again, the marimba is going back to, um, again, some of the songs that you wouldn't know by name. If I said, I already have a husband, you'd be like, I have no idea, right? (laughs) But you can find them on Spotify. And and I'm going to link to a lot of these in the show notes. It's Gwem and Zadka is G-U-E-M and Zaka, Z-A-K-A, perform a lot of the entrance music in there and there's there's a song called Les Serpent which is just beautiful and haunting and I love so very much and I guess I just paid so much more attention to it after spending hours and hours and hours just recording ambient sounds of Adventureland not necessarily recording the, the script and the dialogue for the audio tours but so much especially in that land in order to make it immersive and people make people feel as though they were walking together with me on this tour that music had to be very prevalent and i wanted to make sure i really captured as much of it as i could Uh, and i really fell in love with music that i probably had just never paid much attention to beforehand if that makes any sense oh so I have a question for you, Lou. How how far back do does the music from Balafon Miranda Ensemble go? How far because back in terms of time? Because Adventureland wasn't the first place I heard I already have a husband. Really? I was in front of Flame Tree Barbecue when I heard it the first time. <laughs> And, I, and that's and that is going to be true for a, a bunch of these songs. You'll find them not just, and I didn't know that. I didn't know you found it at, at Flame Tree, but I know that a lot of these songs you'll hear, not just here in Magic Kingdom, but you might find them in Epcot. Um, you might find them in Disneyland, not just on their Main Street, but some in, in in DCA, for example, too. But I didn't know that next time I'm sitting by the water eating my seven pounds of delicious barbecue. When I say seven, it's a slight exaggeration. I mean more like five. I will listen out for that same song because it is it's such a it's such a wonderful um uh, and familiar tune uh, i'm i'm a little 
So we were talking about the background music and, and Lou, you would just, you know, kind of elaborated on it. And, and I think sometimes I think it's a shame when the parks are so busy and there's so many people that the music is so underlining because it, it really does, um, it really does set the mood and it every, every once in a while I wish we could turn it up a little bit. And that's, I'm kind of a little like going now with less people. And you had said earlier in the podcast um, about the music is more, like you said, the, the, the lights are brighter, the music's louder. Um, I always remember hearing it more at the end of the day when the parks are starting to empty out and getting a, 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 a more of appreciation for it because you can hear it more. But you're right. There are some incredible musicianship that, that is going on there. And again, it just goes back to what we had said earlier about setting the mood. You know, it's perfect. It's it's just perfect. And Adventureland is this, is this wonderful wonderful amalgam of different styles because you do have different areas and, and really time periods represented from the jungles to the, the Caribbean to the desert. So what you hear over by Swiss Family Treehouse is going to be different than what you hear out in front of Pirates of the Caribbean, which we'll get to. And But over in, in Magic Carpets of Aladdin, you'll have not just songs from the film, but you'll also find background themes that use a lot of instruments that you'd find in in the Middle East. So it has a, yeah, a very yeah. different feel around that, especially around the uh, the Agra, Agrabah Bazaar area. There's a, a group called the Farah Dance Orchestra, um, and they have an album called The World's a Stage, Music of the Far East. Again, the titles you you might not necessarily know, but as soon as you hear them, you're like, "Oh, that's Adventureland!" Like I'm by the magic carpets of Aladdin. I'm I'm on my fourth Dole Whip of the morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't judge me. Don't judge me. It's very hot in Florida. <laughs> Some of us just get one right a day. Okay. <laughs> Silly me. I don't know how to do it right. I'm sorry. But obviously, and then as you move closer to Pirates of the Caribbean, you get music from the attraction, which is is really some of the most recognizable and familiar and beloved. Now, not just from the attraction, but from the the films as well. No, from, and after the films right. came out, you've got you know, look the scores from Hans Zimmer and Klaus Badelt. Uh, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing his name. Um, are, are just the remarkable um, in terms of helping, and and then once they were sort of incorporated into the attraction too, uh, helping to not just connect the dots, especially for younger guests who are introduced to pirates, maybe from the films, but it added a different level of energy, I think, to the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction as well. Agreed. Um, how has nobody? It. How has nobody mentioned Yo Ho Yo Ho a Pirate's Life for me? Because we weren't there yet. <laughs> Physically, we are literally going we're through walking. the park in the exact same way that I go. So, oh, so yeah. we literally we're taking a, okay. It. So we're taking an actual walk through the park. I guess. <laughs> totally. Wait a minute. Let me go. Stop. Hold on. We need to turn back. I need to get a cheeseburger spring roll, and now we can keep moving forward. <laughs> Have you just finished your four dole whips? Yeah, I was going to say, you've already had four dole dole whips. Uh, Listen, (laughs) it's milk and juice, so it's kind of breakfast in a cup. (laughs) And it's kind of good for you. Exactly. And I'm getting my vitamin C. There you go. Pineapple is so, so nutritious. See? Okay, so we're on (laughs) (laughs) Yoho. So I have a question for everyone. Is there any other theme park in the world where a song from its attraction becomes popular outside of that park? Because I make a case for Yoho, um, uh, Grim Grim and Ghosts, and of course, Small World, that these songs have have extended beyond the borders of the theme park and, and no other theme park can claim that. And, and 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 because they're so well crafted to the ride, they're so well done. Um, I, I just yo ho yo ho pirates life for me has some of the best lyrics and tunes, and it's simple enough that everybody can sing along. 
when you're in that boat, annoying the other people in the boat that don't want to sing along. And it's, it's, again, it's, it's the best. It's just the best. I, I you know, mm, so good. I agree with you on everything that you said. And again, I, I want to make sure we call out the people that yep. create these. Again, it's, it's Exit, George Bruns yep. and Exitentio. George Bruns yep. mm-hmm. did the music. Exitentio did, did the, the lyrics. lyrics. George Bruns, um, again, Disney legend, started off in the 50s uh, with Davy Crockett, King of the Wild Frontier, did a lot of scores for, again, songs you'll continue to hear and us mention throughout this show because Westward Ho the Rag Wagons, Johnny Tremaine that you'll hear in Frontierland and in um, uh, Liberty Square, Sleeping Beauty, um, Sword in the Stone. He actually was nominated yeah. for uh, for Best Music for uh, Sword in the Stone in 1963 yeah. as well as one in 1959 for Sleeping Beauty, uh, yeah, Follow Me Boys, yeah. Jungle Book. I mean, so yeah. his his musical uh his his film um references and film history is exceptional on its own not to mention what he does for the uh, theme park attractions as well yeah yeah and and the range I mean, what, what, the um uh, i'm sorry the the thing about disney as a whole is how they can take a song like yoho and just arrange it in 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 in, in, in this transitions between the one scene of pirates to the next scene but there's this common chord uh, element that's going through which is the basis for yoho or whatever song attraction we're in it's just so masterful and i just don't i don't get that anywhere else except you know uh except in disney you know you'll get the we're going to play this song in one room or whatever but like yoho it just it, depending on what scene we're in and, and and like Lou, you had mentioned now, now pirates also has um, added the elements from the film itself too. So the big fight at the, uh, the port is, is all that um, wonderful Hans Zimmer score too. Um, But I don't don't know if anybody does it any better than that. Yeah. The fact that Johnny Depp sang it, at the end of this, yeah. I loved that moment. I was like, yeah. that yeah. is what it should be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, that music, may it never, ever go out of style. When you're teaching your two-year-old and she's like, we, pill- it's pillage and plunder, honey, <laughs> and rifle and loot. <laughs> pillage. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I'm sure that's a yeah, yeah, lovely yeah. thing. Where, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think you're right. Uh, you know, to to both your points about how a song like Yo Ho is not just relegated to a, a a corner of of a of a theme park somewhere. It's it's just part of the zeitgeist. Uh, every you know everybody sort of knows this song. And again, credit huge credit goes to X Atencio Xavier Atencio Excellent. who yeah. uh, yeah. he, he has done. So much, and and his name is going to come up again in in what I think is is arguably the best of the best of the best of of theme park attraction music, at least for me in terms of my love of a, of a of an attraction and the yeah. song, uh, which for me is, is timeless. Um, the two of them and what they were able to create, and again, Exitencio, you know, and I have to sort of I've done shows called I, I just call them the legend of Disney Imagineering right. I've, I haven't done a show on X as yet he needs his own show as well just in terms of going from artist to almost reluctant Imagineer um, to what he was able I mean again talking about Walt extracting the best from people who did not know that they had it in them not only could you be you know, you're an artist, but now all of a sudden you're going to become a script writer. You're going to become a lyricist. What Walt made him realize when he said, I'm not any of those things, is that you're a storyteller and and helped him, you know, take his, his masterful talent and adapt it to theme park scripts and then theme park music as well. Yeah, he, 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 you're right. We are going to hear that name over and over and over again. Um, and, and Walt did have a way of challenging his 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 folks uh, so they could do the best that they could do without them knowing they could do it. Um, 
but Pirates is, uh, it's tough for me to talk a lot about Pirates because it is so uh, well done, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it has become outside of theme parks, you know, the, the whole theme park to movie back to theme park attraction again is, is just something that I've, I, I, that I've, I, I just don't see anywhere else that, that sort of thing. So. Well, I look, you know, right across the way, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about the Tiki Rooms. Uh, and I know we, we mentioned it, you know, before too, but um, I think those are some of the songs that you don't necessarily have to be a Disney fan to to be aware of and to sort of almost, you know, you accidentally know the lyrics to. Um, and again, Sherman Brothers, Sherman Brothers, Sherman Brothers, you know, how many times it's going to be somebody... It, Thank God this isn't a drinking game between Sherman Brothers and Atencio and Buddy Baker today. Um, yeah, yeah. You're, yeah, you're yeah. going to be full of milk very, yeah, very yeah, soon. Very so, uh, anywhere, anything else in Adventureland that we did not touch on other than making sure you go over by um, the, the spitting tiki statues? Because there's actually a really nice um, percussion song that plays there. And I, and I don't actually know what it is and i only have heard it there and it almost seems as though the 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 the, the spitting of the water is 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 matched really? to some of the beats of the music as well um but it's it's just a, it's a fun song and obviously fun to watch kids kids or dave playing there as well <laughs> so and now the percussion song that you're talking about is not in the style of the middle east we're talking about the entrance to the jungle cruise right i mean but right the big the tiki statues out front right yeah yeah the tiki statues okay Uh, the jungle cruise um q line is and i couldn't tell you a thing that they sing because they only do little bits and pieces (laughs) and they got that dj but oh my goodness i'd love to go through that and we we sat at home after one of our trips and we tried listening to it and then we tried pulling it up on youtube and we were just laughing hysterically because that humor that is all through that cue line and that music is so funny and good and i have no idea who does it so i can help you with that because way back way back in 2007 like the, the baby days of ww radio I was planning on doing a DSI, a Disney scene investigation of the Jungle Cruise, which ended up turning out to be a DSI Disney scene investigation of the Jungle Cruise queue because we spent so much time really breaking down the queue and the details and the jokes and the references to characters and films and Imagineers that are subtly hidden throughout that it ends up being an entire segment um, all to itself. And a lot of what we talk about is not what you see in the queue, but what you hear in the queue. Uh, And sometimes having a little bit of a longer wait is actually beneficial. So that's back on show 24, like double digit days of WW radio uh, back in 2000, July, 2007. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Lou, wrong. Um, and I probably will be, but um, most of the songs that are in the queue are from like the 40s, right? Big Bang era, to yep. Big Band era, that sort of thing. They're kind of classic or relatively well known, right? You will find a lot of that, you know, the, the Benny Goodman style orchestra yeah. types of music okay. in there too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which is, you know, it's it's fun when you hear a familiar song, right? Because it does. It yeah. makes you stop and look up and listen a little bit closer when it's something that you recognize. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, it, again, it puts you, it puts you in a time frame, right? It puts you in a time frame. You're in music from that era. You're transported into that era. Now the whole jungle cruise makes more sense. Right. That sort of thing. So, right. And like I said, at the very beginning, the music is so important to help you set that sense of time and place, even though sometimes a lot of it is somewhat um, subconscious. Yeah. That, yeah. I love that line. The name, (laughs) the crocodiles contest, the, um, he does the Tarzan yell at one point. 
you know, as if by accident. It's awesome. <laughs> we love that. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let us make our way. Let let us um, put down our cheeseburger spring rolls and or, or just to finish <laughs> our spring rolls. Um, walk through Caribbean Plaza through ah, to yeah. Frontier Land. Uh, there we go. Uh, so, this, so I'm assuming by your reaction that this is a favorite of yours. Um, again, instantly, please, the next time you walk through, I, I don't want to say close your eyes and, and actually run into a guest, but I almost want you to take your time walking through this transition and listen to how well the music blends from that Caribbean-style percussive music to the instruments that are used to play the music from this era in Frontierland. Yeah, you know, so as you're walking through that plaza, you're you're still hearing uh, the percussive sounds, the marimbas, the xylophones, those type of melodic instruments. But as you go, you start hearing the more traditional country stuff, the, the harmonica. fiddles, the, yeah, the harmonica, right. The fiddles, the um, banjos. And there's, before you know it, one is fading out while the other one is coming in. And for the life of me, I still don't know how they do that. Um, you know, I mean, I have thoughts, but you know, it's, a, I don't know if they've recorded that and, and but it, it, it is really, you know, it's gotta be speaker replacement or something like that. And well, orchestrated arranged you know but it is again we talked about it seamless transitions between one land into the other and now we're into the frontier land we're into the i don't want to say wild west but we're into the west because and the instrumentation brings us there and we've stepped into that land now and I've heard y'all talk about this transition and I believe the problem is that I walk too fast but um <laughs> It's it's so seamless and so successful in what they're doing that I don't notice it. So I haven't taken the time like you guys to stop in the middle, you know, going from one to the other to hear the transition. I'm just I was I was listening to a steel drum band and then all of a sudden I'm listening to Davy Crockett. <laughs> so I'm just because, <laughs> yeah. you know, I got to get a splash mountain. I got a fast pass. got to do this thing. OK, yeah. <laughs> And that's kind of a testament to how well they do it, right, Terry? It, it I, is. Because it you totally don't is. notice it. The, the average guest doesn't notice it. You know, I, I, I may be a little bit more tuned because I'm, uh, you know, of my musical background, but I, I, I'm the same way. If I'm trying to get to Splash Mountain, I got a fast pass, and it's over in ten minutes. I'm, <laughs> I'm going pretty fast. Yeah, and I guess I, you know, I, I'm different um, because I do. Although I walk fast because I'm originally from Jersey and everything's just faster, right? But I do like <laughs> to take my time, and, and under I understand it. It is the 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 privilege and blessing of being a local is that when I am in the parks, I'm not necessarily rushing from attraction to attraction, but I do like to take my time and just wander. And I almost, you know, it's almost like a game to me. Um, you know. Kids, when I was a kid and you drove from New Jersey to Florida, you had to find a lot of ways to occupy yourself and you'd, you'd make up games in your mind. And sometimes when I walk through the parks, I'll just sort of be sort of mentally focused on the background music, seeing how many I'm able to identify or how many I'm able to recognize. And I think that's what Frontierland affords us is for those of us who, who live and grew up in, in the United States, there are so many songs that are so very familiar to us that we've either seen in movies or they're just classic American folk songs, right? We all know Home on the Range, On Top of Old Smokey, or, or The Ballad of Davy Crockett, again, so to, you know, connect it to, to Disney again. But... Um, even some of the, the later music, right, 20th century songs like Ghost Riders in the Sky. Um, it was a Stan Jones song, but we, I think a lot of people know it from, from Johnny Cash and, and, and so many others. And I think that's it. You know, so many of those songs that you might not necessarily know by name, you've heard them in movies. You've seen them in TV show without actually knowing what get along little doggies is or who sings i've got spurs that jingle jangle and the old chisholm trail they're familiar and and to a certain degree um comforting 
to us. And and I think that you're right. You talked about how you go from steel drums and percussion to banjos and harmonicas and, and, and violins without really any other percussion that you heard in Adventureland. It is is it familiarity that most guests will have, and 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 like you said, those of us that live in the states will have that already. But then the instrumentation for those that don't have the that didn't grow up on home on the range and the classics that you said, the instrumentation brings you there also. Uh, I think it's just a real clever way of getting you set into the mood. And, and getting you the background and the, the back set and ev- everything you need to say, we've now left one period of time and we're in another period of time. Uh, again, very, very clever, cleverly done um, as you, you know, you're maybe three minutes into it and you're fully immersed into this new sound that's, that's coming at you. But like Terry said, it's so in, in, you know, in the back that you, you, it's just happening. Your brain registers it, but you may not register it type of thing as you're approaching, as you see splash, splash and, 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 uh, and big thunder in the distance, you know, we're, you know, now the story is beginning to be told. These stories are beginning to be told. So. And if we're the quiz essential music that represents Frontierland best, just for me is on big thunder. Although I guess I really, we'll talk about bears later, but um, (laughs) I'm skipping Splash just to go there first because I love and love, love, love that music. And um, the song All Aboard the Mine Train, Mm -hmm. I did not realize until I started taking notes for this. I was like, it's funny that that's called that. And I look at the copyright and it says 1961. So now I'm confused and I'm like, okay, we need to look this up. So I'm Googling it and to find out that it was from Disneyland originally, a uh, mine train through nature's wonderland. I had no mm-hmm. clue that that know. was from the other park. <laughs> I was like, that is so cool. I love this. Well, and that's just one of the songs that, was written like i said written in the 20th century but really gives a sense of that period and place right so west side of the west side of the wide missouri welcome back richard and robert sherman bang goes old betsy is a george brun song so a lot of these and and same thing and and there's a lot of george brun's music that you'll find over by um uh, performed over by a country bear jamboree when we get to it yeah. as well um and because frontierland is like a main street it's like a liberty square as you walk through you are moving again through time and place right so coming from where we're coming from heading from adventureland towards liberty square uh we're moving through time and really going from the west to the east as the United States is is sort of normally I'd go from Liberty Square to Frontierland as we move west, but we're sort of going backwards in time. And you can you can you can also see where you are geographically in the country, right? So the Diamond Horseshoe Saloon would be a place that's closer to St. Louis as opposed to what you'd see Big Thunder Mountain being farther out west. And so there's, there's again, there's that trend. You know, you can learn more about this in the audio tour of Frontierland. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you happen to go to the shop at www.radio.com, you can hear more about it there. And hear a lot of these songs, too, because you'll hear different songs in different parts. So you'll hear Big Rock Candy Mountain over at Big Thunder Mountain, and you'll hear... Buffalo Gals and Ghost Riders in the Sky. And then you, as you move more towards, you know, other parts and move closer to Liberty Square and, and what really sort of moving closer to the Mississippi, that's where you'll start to hear some of, you know, you'll hear Shenandoah and Mar Darling Clementine and, and some of these other songs as well. So there's ones that are specific to locations, like there's... Um, Deep in the heart of Texas and Yellow Rose of Texas, which very much establish sort of where you are, and then others that you can find 
throughout Frontierland, and then certainly Splash Mountain has its own set of songs currently associated with it as well. Yeah. Currently, yes. I was going to say, let's not leave the South quite yet. You know, I, I'm <laughs> the only one rep- representing right here. Wait, you're from the South? I never, I never would have known. <laughs> I know. I have no accent to speak of. Anywho, uh, I do love everything on Splash Mountain. I was going to try to say, I should just name one. But you can't, because all three of them are just every single one of them I love. I love zippity doo Da. I love How Do You Do. I love Everybody Has a Laughing Place. Everybody has a laughing place. Let me just say it. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but I, I love, and I think, you know, look, and, and as much, and not to get a discussion on, on Song of the South or Splash Mountain, but I, I do love so much, again, of the background music there because there there's songs that I heard as a kid growing up that have nothing to do necessarily with Disney. So there, again, I sort of go back to, as I said earlier, this sense of comfort and nostalgia and emotion when I hear, you know, shoe fly or old McDonald or, or some of these other songs that I heard growing up as a kid, um, they're they're familiar to me, um, not from their presence in a Disney park. If that makes any sense. Oh yeah, it, I think it does make sense. I, I again, not to get into any sort of controversy, but I think the thing I will miss the most about Splash Mountain is the sc- the score, mm-hmm. and, and I'm glad that they're replacing it with a score that I absolutely love just as much. But I mean the the the, the great thing about Splash Mountain you get on the boat you take that little dip how do you do you know and you're uh, you're you're kind of no what bad will happen this is a happy song and then (laughs) and then vroom down the well that wasn't too bad and we're in the laughing place and then you know and then the the big drop happens and then again my wife and I are knowing everybody in the boat because we're singing at the top of our lungs, zippity doo dah. You know. Note to and self: Never ride never, with Dave and Terry you, at the same time. You oh, do not. And Dave, we, I'd love to ride with you. We I did. Think this would be so much fun. Uh, did we, we ride? We did. With? Yeah. Well, oh. that though. Small world. We wrote together That's after right. a momentum. After, after we had, had dinner yeah. at Liberty Tree, I and remember. Thank God the whole boat was filled with momentum, <laughs> folks, because I think we would have, you know, security, security. Um, but yes, Flash Mountain, how do you not call that the, the jewel of, when it comes to songs, and we're talking about music, that is the jewel of the land, uh, I feel, you know, um, it's, it's just perfectly placed songs, they're all happy, you forgot that you got so scared going down that, well, I get scared going down that thing and scream, <laughs> but that's all, that's me, I'm sure nobody else does that, so, um, but so good, so good, I'll miss that. The music yeah. is the best part, and while I will miss it, I can't wait. I, I'd love to yeah. ride it with your wife, Kathy, and get ready to sing, you know, <laughs> almost there. Oh, I'm we can belt that one out, baby. I know that last scene is probably going to be uh, <laughs> going down the bio, and I think we'll be just as happy. Just yep. as happy, you know. So. Yeah, it gets you excited for, for what is to come from, certainly just from a, a, a musical perspective. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, oh, I mean, again, adding New Orleans land, jazz. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I look, part of, I, I love New Orleans is is one of, if not my favorite city in uh, these wonderful United States. And it's, it's due in large part, yes, to the food, but really also to the music. And it's one of the reasons why I love Princess and the Frog so much is because of, of not just the the you know the title tunes, and but the score um, for, for that film is also equally beautiful yeah. as well. And I just want to add that hopefully Randy Newman's going to add some new music. That yeah, again, great. his name too will, will, will be coming up as we talk about the music yeah. of the parks. Um, yep. So more as we go forward. So true. True. Uh, anything Ooh. else in Frontierland uh, before uh, yes. we get to Country Bear Jamboree? Oh, 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 oh I was going to oh, say. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was like, Hello, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not that crazy of a person. I mean, wow. I think- Get this man some food. He's starting to lose his mind here. <laughs> We're not going to talk about country. Well, you you run and get something to eat, Lou. We'll sing it out. I mean, <laughs> we'll, we can go uh, So again, you know, look, Country Bear Jamboree, and, and we've talked about what this attraction was originally planned for in terms of 
the the uh, the ski resort and how it eventually came to Walt Disney World and, and then to other parks as well. Again, Exitensio, George Bruns created these new songs for these <laughs> singing bears to <laughs> perform <laughs> along with a couple of familiar songs, which again, I think are, are helpful to ground people. Look, I, I love blood on the saddle. Um, the, the text yep. song blood on, on, on the saddle. Yep. Um, it was always one of my dad's favorites, um, as, as a kid. Now that blood on the saddle, you know, is one of my favorites. Uh, my woman ain't pretty. Also, a text for her song. But she don't swear none. <laughs> but she doesn't swear. But it's this is is such like if you sort of break them down. Uh, other than Mama, don't shoot little Buford. They're just sort of fun, <laughs> fun and funny songs um, yeah, that are just um, yeah. And I just you know if, if you sort of. I love the melody, but if you stop and listen to some of the lyrics too, I think that's why the attraction has not really changed very much since the park first opened. Yeah. I, um, for me, um, my family, uh, we didn't travel a whole lot. We didn't take big trips. And, and one of the first big trips that we took was, was down at Disney world when it was just the magic kingdom. And so if you want to talk about nostalgia, country bear jamboree was the thing that i brought back the most that's that's the, the you know the whole thing and and like you said lou blood on the saddle it was such a uh, a memory a defining moment memory that's this old big old bear and blood on the saddle you know it was like how could you not forget you know forget that how and um and but as i got older and we saw it more some of the other songs um, are it's, they're just so much fun it's such a fun I don't, what, I don't know Lou how long is it 15 20 minutes now if that now it was 17 uh, but it's gone down hasn't it, it right yeah. I knew they brought it down that's why I wasn't quite sure but it's just a rip I mean you know knee slapping <laughs> you know, a fun show and 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 you're right, Lou. You know, Exitencio and and George Bruns, their handprints are over a lot of. I'm looking through the list of songs now, and and the um the folks that that um, um composed it, and um they're just they're they're, they're classic. They're they're so well done. It, it's tough to write a, a fun song, you know, with you know like that. And and these are well crafted songs, you know. Um, so, and all the girls that turn all, me on, all the guys that turn me on, <laughs> yeah, turn, turn me on. down. God, it just <laughs> oh, and little Buford. Oh my God, so good. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh no, I got it all. Trixie, tears will be the chaser for your wine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I used to watch that little glass. <laughs> do, you, then, um, do you have Teddy a Bear's favorite? Toes. Do you have a favorite song from Country Bear Jamboree? I'm going to be all weird and not say Blood on the Saddle because it is all the guys that turn me on, turn me down. I love <laughs> that song. Amy and I harmonize on it when we because <laughs> it's a three part girl harmony. I mean, we cover two of the three parts. So I'm probably going to get hate mail for this, but it's Mama. Don't, <laughs> don't whip little Buford. I just, it cracks me up every time, every time. Yeah, you have to just sort of take it as, as being light and, and fun and fanciful, and, and that's all. Yeah, right. But yeah, look, yeah, so. uh, over as an overall, in terms of the land, right, and, and, and just um, in terms of, uh, again, being from the United States, one of the reasons why I love Frontierland so much is the, not just the unique songs that were created for the attractions, but the familiarity and the wonderful arrangement of so many songs that we've known from growing up or from hearing on film or on TV, uh, sometimes rearranged uh, for this land using those basic instruments. And again, sort of that, that comparing and contrasting the, the percussion in Adventureland being so prevalent and are basically being non-existent here in Frontierland is, is an, is an interesting contradiction. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, uh, musically speaking, 
your when you're dealing with a percussion type of thing your tone quality your scales or whatever i don't want to get too technical here you know you've got your xylophones but they're not as elaborate as a, as a banjo or a violin so musically from a, a melody standpoint this land's gonna it's gonna quote unquote sing out more because the instrumentation they're using allow that but then again you know um both not saying that adventureland uh, the the score in Adventureland isn't fitting for what it is, but I to your point, Lou, I think you're correct. I think the music in Frontier you, does kind of open things up because of the type of music. Most of it's it's, it's upbeat, uh, t- you know. Um, it, uh, if I could say, like I said, like knee slapping and all that stuff, um, and in and, and it just uh, it just pours out, if you will, you know. It just it just keeps you. It's, it's just happy music. <laughs> so I want to move to a place where maybe you can't sing along quite as well as you could in Frontierland. And it's Liberty Square, where, again, yeah. the yeah. background music is critical in, in establishing time and place, setting and I hope you enjoyed part one of our musical tour of Magic Kingdom. Please stay tuned next week for part two as we continue on to Liberty Square, Fantasyland, Tomorrowland, and of course the parades and nighttime fireworks spectacular shows. But in the meantime, I'd love to hear from you and want to know your favorite piece of attraction music in the lands that we've covered so far this week. The best way to let me know is to post in the WW Radio Clubhouse. It's our group on Facebook Go to www.radio.com slash group. It'll take you right there. I'll post this question there. You can also call the voicemail at 407-900-9391. That's 407-900-WDW1. Leave a voicemail. Tell me. Sing it to me. Be heard on the air. And tell me what your favorite piece of attraction, background, or theme music is in the lands we've covered so far. Don't forget to tune in next week for part two. And in the meantime, please spread the word. Tell a friend and share a link to this episode on your favorite social accounts. It's time for our Walt Disney World Trivia Question of the Week, where I invite you to test your knowledge of Walt Disney World's history or see how well you pay attention to the details in what you see, hear, smell, remember, taste... If you think you know the answer, you can enter via our online form for a chance to win a Disney prize package. Of course, before we get to this week's question, we're going to go back, review last week's, and select our winner. So last week, I asked you to identify where in Walt Disney World you have, or can, still hear this phrase. And finally, it's time to decide who gets to portray me. Oh, you've got some awfully big drawers to fill. Clearly, that was not meant to be a dramatic reading of, certainly not an impression of, Madame Legrand Bouche from Enchanted Tales with Belle in New Fantasyland. Thanks to the hundreds of you who entered, got this one correct, and last week, you were playing not just for all of my digital products, which is my 102 ways to save money for an at Walt Disney World book, all seven of my virtual audio walking tours of Magic Kingdom, but a brand new, never before given prize a brand new WW Radio coffee or tea or whatever you want to put in it mug and last week's winner randomly selected is Caroline Berry so Caroline thank you congratulations I have your shipping address because you use the form I will send you your links and prize package out right away if you played last week and didn't win that's okay because here's your next chance to enter in this week's Walt Disney World Trivia Challenge So we're talking about Magic Kingdom this week, and I was thinking a lot about the different attractions, the different characters, the different inspiration, and I was thinking about the voyage of the Little Mermaid attraction in New Fantasyland, and was wondering if you knew where in Walt Disney World did Ariel actually have her own restaurant that may or may not have been actually named after her? That is the question for this week, you have until Sunday, September 6th. How is it September already? 
Sunday, September 6th at 11.59 p.m. to go to the all-new, by the way, www.radio.com. Click on this week's podcast. Use the online form there. Again, you are going to play for all seven of the audio tours, the 102 Ways book, and a brand new WW Radio mug. Also, don't forget that if you like Disney trivia, be sure and follow me over on Instagram at Instagram.com slash Lou Mangiello as I share almost daily Disney trivia on my Instagram stories and posts. It's easy, fun, takes just a few seconds to play. Great way to test your knowledge, maybe even learn something along the way. So good luck and have fun. That's going to do it for this week's show. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in this and every week. Just a couple of quick reminders. Please be part of the community and conversation by joining our Facebook group. You can go to www.radio.com slash community. It'll give you a link not just to our group, but how you can watch and chat live on Facebook every Wednesday night. Become a member of our WDW Radio running team and lots of other ways to be part, really, of the community and the conversation. Speaking of which, I want to say thanks to some of the new and longtime members of the WDW Radio Nation family. I sincerely appreciate your love, friendship, support, and help. I also love the opportunity to be able to give back to you each and every month and share some unique, exclusive opportunities as well. I want to thank some of the new and longtime members of the Nation family, including Deck Officer, I love the Star Wars reference, Brian Campbell, John Fletcher, just Mark, Danny Carnos, Austin Wraith, and Russell Dameron. If you want to find out how you can not only help the show, but get some of those exclusive rewards every month, including scavenger hunts, trivia quests, we have our own private Facebook group, magic band covers, logo gear, t-shirts, monthly care packages from Walt Disney World, exclusive live video group calls, early access and discounts to special events and more. You can visit www.radio.com slash support. Don't forget, it is, of course, completely optional. Starts at as little as a dollar a month, but it is a great way to help support the show. And don't forget that a portion of the proceeds of your contributions do go to our Dream Team project to benefit the Make-A-Wish Foundation of America. Of course, as part of the community, really my extended family, I'd love to hear from you. This is really a two-way conversation, not just me pushing out content. So again, be part of the community and conversation on Facebook. Call the voicemail at 407-900-9391 with a question, a comment, or just a hello from the parks. Or email me directly, lou at www.radio.com if you have a question, comment, or something that I can share on the air. And because I am still and really always daily grateful for the opportunity and the privilege to do what I do and share it with you. I have for a long time now been looking for ways to try and help you any way that I can turn what you love into what you do. I've unfortunately had to postpone my Momentum retreat this summer and my Momentum weekend workshop in Walt Disney World this October. Stay tuned as I will be rescheduling those events in the near future. But if I can help you either with one-on-one mentoring or If you want to be part of our online weekly mastermind group, I still have one seat available. To find out more, you can visit loumangelo.com. And if you are holding an in-person or virtual event, you can visit the speaking page at loumangelo.com to see how I might be able to help you there. And when you're ready to book your next vacation to any Disney or other destination on this planet, please go and visit our friends over at mousefantravel.com. You've heard Becky on the show for more than 13 years. She and her team of agents are my official and recommended provider for so many different reasons. You can get a free, no obligation quote, get any questions answered by visiting mousefantravel.com or you can just find the link on the homepage of www.radio.com. As always, my friend, you are my friend, whether we have met yet or not. All I ask is that if you like the show, please help spread the word. It is so incredibly important. Tweet out that you're listening. Share a link to this or your favorite episode on Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, wherever it might be. And if you can, take just a few seconds to rate and review the show over an Apple podcast. It's incredibly helpful. I want to thank some recent reviewers like Spartan PE, who says, I love the show. Lou brings great topics, insightful guests, and passion to every episode. I just started listening a few months back. Now look forward to his episodes, and I also enjoy going back to listen to the older ones as well. Perfect listen on the way to work, mowing the lawn, and on a long run, whatever that is. The amount he and his guests know about Disney is unreal. Highly recommended for any Disney fan. And Travesty Park says it's amazing Disney content. 
I've been a Disney fan my entire life, ever since I was a little baby going to the parks with my mom, and now going with my girlfriend and sister. We still have all the love and feel the magic every time we visit. This podcast is a cherry on top of the Disney cake. All the awesome stories and details really make you appreciate the park so much more. Lose knowledge and passion is a breath of fresh air in our trying climate right now. Thanks for all you do. Keep the magic coming. P.S. Timmy is okay too. LOL. Spartan P.E. Travesty Park, thank you again. Just search for WW Radio in Apple Podcasts, or if you go to www.com slash iTunes, it'll give you a link directly on how to do it there. And finally, um, again, before I, I thank you, again, this this show is, is WW Radio is almost a, a misnomer, right? Because it's not just about Walt Disney World or even just the Disney parks. It's Star Wars, it's Marvel, it's movie. It's all the things under the Disney umbrella that we love and This past week, um, very shocking and surprising and devastating news with the passing of Chadwick Boseman, who is known to many Marvel fans as King T'Challa from Black Panther. He's obviously been a number of other iconic movie roles as well. Uh, He struggled quietly with colon cancer and passed this week uh, far, far too young. And I think... There are lessons to be learned here, um, even in tragedy, and and I hope that we will let his passing serve as a reminder that we're all facing individual battles that are sometimes hidden from everybody else. And to that end, be gentle, be patient, and be kind. And he will be missed as a person, not because of the roles that he played, but I will leave you with a quote from Black Panther that maybe we could all take to heart. And he said, we must find a way to look after one another as if we were one single tribe. Because we are. We are a tribe of humanity. So be kind, be good, be patient, be understanding. Choose the good. More importantly, be the good. I hope that this is your best week ever. So until next time, thank you. I love you. See ya. Hi, it's Elizabeth from Massachusetts. Um, I just finished listening to episode 344, and it was um, a top 10 about the things we're most thankful for um, in Walt Disney World. I just wanted to call in and throw in mine, which is um, that I'm really thankful for a place that I can bring my family and that we can create new memories. Um, you know, if the resorts there didn't exist and if Walt hadn't had this vision of creating a place for families to do that, um, you know, I wouldn't get to go every single holiday season with my family to do that and to uh, create those memories together. So I'm super, super thankful for that, and I'm hoping that I'll be able to come down um, this winter as well. Also, super huge congratulations on the 600th episode. Um, I haven't listened to it yet, but I'm so excited, and you should be super proud of yourself, Lou. Um, and thank you, thank you, thank you for creating a place where we can all um, come together, talk about something we love, and, yeah, just get to know new people we wouldn't have known otherwise. So if everyone's doing well, staying safe, um, gearing up for the school years if they haven't started already, I know that um, I start later this week um, here in Massachusetts. So I'm excited um, to finally see my kiddos again and to be in person and for all those good things. So I hope everyone's doing well. Um, stay happy, do awesome things, and see you real soon. Thanks, Lou. Bye. Hey, Lou. It's, excuse me, Christine Morrison from Flower Town, Pennsylvania. I just wanted to congratulate you on show 600. I'm still listening to it, but I love it. I love it, love it. I love when you guys do recaps and memories, and it's so much fun. I wanted to say that Moving forward, I have two things that I really think would be make would make cool shows. Um, top, I think I did tell you this once before. Top ten Disney dogs because there's a lot of them if you think about it. And then I think you should do more interview slash dining reviews. The combo was awesome when you were at home. I think it was at homecoming. But I think it's awesome when you – or sit down, you're sitting down with the chef at his own restaurant eating the food 
talking about how they got where they are. I just think that's awesome and such a cool angle. I think you should do more of those. Um, more dining reviews with your family because I love to hear what the kids have to say and Deanna. And um, also, I think my last message, I may have said that I was going to watch Frank, not Howard. I was half asleep. I'm not sure. But anyway, I'm still watching Howard. Haven't finished it, but so far it's really good. And I haven't gotten to the black hole yet. I'm a little behind. But things are calming down over here, so I'll be able to catch up. So congratulations. Can't wait for 600 more shows. Everybody make someone smile today. Have a wonderful one. Bye. Hey, Lou. It's Jim Smith calling from Hanover, Mass. Haven't called in in a while. Uh, I have four words for you. Four words for fun in the box group. It makes me happy. Your podcast, our group of people, the, the virtual friends that I've made that I hope I'll someday meet, including you, haven't met yet, hope to do that someday before too long. Uh, your stories, your experiences, uh, the incredible attitude that you have that permeates through the whole box group and everyone who's in it. It makes me happy. It makes me happy. It makes me happy. There's, there's no other way I can put it, so I will just leave it there. Lou, thank you so much for all you do. Thank you for 600. Thank you for getting us all together. Take care. Hey, Lou. Brian Wilson from St. Augustine, Florida here. I just want to say congratulations on your show, 600. That's so awesome. Super proud of you. Just wanted to say, actually, I don't have the best moment on the podcast, but I have the best moment meeting you and Becky during the 2020 marathon weekend. When I was running, I had the pleasure of being able to stop and meet you guys and actually say thank you for what you did for me when I was homesick on my deployment overseas. And I was actually able to give you a gift of the colors that I wore on my uniform just to say thank you. And then I appreciate all of you, even you other, other listeners, to say thank you for just making things a little bearable when I was over there. So keep it up. Congratulations on show 600. Proud of you. Love you all. See you later.